Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. This is the post-fight review for Guido Vianello and Jay McFarlane, but also I'll just sort of touch on some thoughts about Vianello and where he's at because I just don't see it. I know some people are trying to sell him as a very top heavyweight prospect. I just can't put him in that category. There's nothing that I saw in this fight with Jay McFarlane that makes me think that he's headed anywhere towards a heavyweight title. If anything, we've already seen the warning signs versus Kingsley eBay a couple of years ago where he was lucky to escape with the draw. And since then, he's basically not really fought that often. He's had some injuries. Um, the competition has been great that he has fought. And now, while he controlled the fight mostly against Jay McFarlane, you needed to be doing better in this fight. And what I mean by that is you had a guy in McFarlane who turned up 277 pounds, which is far too much for a guy who's, what, 5'11 or whatever he is, 6 foot. He was out of shape coming into this. His best opportunity was to put in a couple of good rounds, you know, really let his hands go and see what he could do. And he came out strong, came out aggressive, but he couldn't really get towards, uh, get uh, Guido Vianello. Uh, and Vianello started to settle into the fight, get a little bit on top. And after two rounds, you're like, okay, well, he's starting to control him and, um, you know, have a real handle on this fight. But one of the things that I think Vianello is going to sort of hurt him when he starts climbing the levels in, uh, in competition his gas tank seems to be extremely suspect. He basically took the third round off. The, pack, uh, the pace slackened significantly. And when McFarlane in round four seemed to hurt his hand, Vianello put it on him for a little bit, but it seemed to take it a bit out of him. The pace was pretty sedate for the rest of the fight. When you're fighting a guy who's 277, that's going to suit them. And McFarlane was able to, bearing in mind this fight, he's coming in basically hands down walking in. And Vianello's not really able to do too much with him. It was the odd uppercut that landed. But he couldn't really sort of get away the shots that he needed to hurt McFarlane, a guy who was there to be hit. The jab sort of fell away as the fight progressed. He just completely neglected the body. It was actually McFarlane who was starting to work the body as the fight wore on, especially in the later rounds. But it was headhunting, and I think earlier in Vianello's career, when he was fighting on some of the top-ranked cards in the United States, you know, they matched him carefully to help him get those knockouts with, you know, big right hands. He didn't really seem to dent McFarlane at all, and they were talking about Vianello, what he's doing, how he's sort of coming up in the division, how good of a prospect he is. But I don't see it. And there was nothing that I was left from watching this fight that changed my mind. And, you know, I know there's some people who were big on Vianello, even ahead of the eBay fight, thinking this guy could do something in the heavyweight division. I'm just not convinced. I don't think he's a big power puncher. I don't think he's got the gas tank to work, work hard enough. And let's face it, when you start getting to the upper echelons of the heavyweight division, if you're not a big puncher, you've also got to be able to work hard and have a good work rate. Because that is something that's going to help you, you know, one, put your opponent at a bit of a disadvantage. You can outwork him, pick up rounds, and two, gas them out. But Vianello seemed to be having trouble to keep a good pace against a guy who was clearly out of shape. And we've seen get stopped before. We've seen him in fights where guys have put it on him. And Vianello was comfortably just sort of working off the back foot, content not really to push the pace at all in the second half of the fight. Maybe he just wanted the rounds, but... I mean, if I'm top rank and I'm looking at this, this performance and bearing in mind, he got the decision, what was it, 80, 72 on two cards, 79, 73. So on the face of it, it seems, oh yeah, it was a good effort and it was okay, but that's just it. It was okay. McFarlane is what, a top 100 heavyweight, top 80, top 100, somewhere there or thereabouts, and you're doing enough to get the win, but you're not looking like the billing that people are giving you. So what does top rank do? I mean, as it was, this is some sort of random card in Italy that they weren't necessarily the main promoter of, but they had some promotional interest in. You might have seen if you watched that fight, the ring um, sort of ropes, the top rank livery, etc. What do they do with him? 
because he's now with a record of 10 and 0 with the one draw with Kingsley eBay at a point where they can't just match him with complete fodder. And arguably, I do think that when he steps up to not too far, not too many rungs above, I think he's going to be in trouble. And the question is, well, what does top rank do with him now? Because then that becomes the question, do they have to put him into a step-up fight with maybe a gatekeeper like Carlos Takam, who's co-promoted by them? Or do they have to basically put him in with another up-and-coming prospect who's going to blitz him, like a Jared Anderson? Because I don't know what they can really do with him in the United States because he's not a big name, he's not a big puncher, he's not bringing a lot of fans in and selling a lot of tickets for these shows by all accounts. So are they kind of left as just, he's just this mid-card guy matched against so-so opponents? Let's face it, this main event, if this was in the United States, this fight, it's probably the fourth or fifth fight on the card as opposed to a main event in Italy. So he gets his homecoming in Italy, he wins, but he just fails to impress. I don't really see where he's going and how he's going to get there, because despite some people saying Guido Vianello is a top prospect, he's a middling prospect at best, for me. I can't see it. And I've always been sceptical, and people have always talked him up. I don't really see it. How about you? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.